Introduction to Robotics Workspace. So for the same robotic arm that we have, it's a planner two degrees of freedom robotic arm. And we are asked to find the workspace of this robotic arm. The workspace is basically the set of all possible points for the end effector. This could uh, make up uh, an area if it's a planar robotic arm or it could be a volume if we are talking about a general non-planar robotic arm. So in, um, in a previous lecture where we talked about the inverse kinematics, we, we reached a, a relationship that gives me the cosine of theta 2 as a function of x and y and the uh, geometrical uh, features of the robotic arm. And since uh, in, in the workspace we're looking for the possible values, so how about we look at the possible values for cosine theta 2? We know in general that uh, the cosine of an angle would really uh, be um, between minus 1 and 1. And if we substitute for cosine theta 2 with the expression here, then uh, what we will have is, since uh, so these are the possible values for theta 2, then what we will get here will give me the possible values for x and y. And, and that really makes sense. And this is the core of the uh, procedure that I follow for finding the workspace. So we multiply both sides of the inequality by uh, 2 L1 L2. We'll add um, uh, L1 squared and L2 squared to all sides of this inequality. Uh, this will uh, recognizing here that what we have here can be expressed as L1 minus L2 squared. The same thing here. All of these terms can be uh, replaced with L1 plus L2 squared. So I'm going to take this to the next slide. I'm going to compare it with the equation of a circle where x node and y node uh, represents the center of the circle. So if we compare it with the inequality here, and let's consider the, um, let's say, the extreme cases. So what if I had like uh, an equal sign here? And this would represent the minimum value uh, this could ob obtain. So x squared plus y squared would have a minimum value when it is equal to uh, L1 minus L2 squared, which is the equation of a circle with a radius of L1 minus L2. So this would be the minimum value for uh, the radius and then let's look at the other extreme when uh, here we have x squared plus uh, y squared is equal to l1 plus l2 squared and this would represent also the uh, a circle with a radius of l1 plus l2 and since we have larger than less than so the rest of the points and possible values for x squared plus y squared will be also circles, uh, but with radii in between L1 minus L2, uh, L1 minus L2 as an inner radius and L2, L1 plus L2 as an outer radius. So it turns out that the workspace for, for this robotic arm is simply uh, a ring with an inner radius of L1 minus L2 and an outer radius of L1 plus L2. And this could have been uh, obtained by uh, by using a, your imagine, imagination a little bit and uh, see what will happen if we start, you know, increasing uh, theta 1 by small increments and then also allowing for theta 2 to increase and to rotate so slowly you will start you start seeing that you are really populating uh, the area of uh, of a ring and this can have been also obtained by using matlab so you can generate random values for theta 1 and theta 2 substitute them into the forward kinematics um, equation uh, 
and to generate um, random values for X and Y and you will end up after running the code for a um, few minutes uh, you will end up with the um, a rough uh, a representation of the workspace for this problem so as a summary uh, the workspace for this robotic arm is going to be a, a ring with an inner radius of l1 minus l2 and an outer radius of l1 plus l2 Here we have another example. This is a, a prismatic, a revolute prismatic robotic arm, still a planar one, two degrees of freedom. Revolute joint here, represented with theta one, and a prismatic joint here, represented with d2, the joint variable d2. And we are asked to find in the workspace for this robotic arm. If you recall in one of the previous lectures where we talked about the inverse kinematics uh, for this uh, configuration, we were able to obtain a relationship between X and theta one and Y and theta and theta one also, uh, from which we, uh, after manipulating these two equations, we were able to obtain uh, the value for theta one and also the value for D2, the variable joint variable uh, D2. This was part of the inverse kinematics. For the workspace, we're going to take these two equations again, the ones we obtained in the inverse kinematics. We're going to square equation one and add it to the square of equation two. So we'll have x2 squared, y2 squared, plus the whole term here squared, plus this one squared as a common factor L2 plus D2 squared. Uh, we have a uh, trigonometric identity that will tell us, uh, that tells us that S1 squared plus cosine theta one squared is equal to one. And this would be the resulting uh, relationship between X squared and Y squared. And this is um, the equation of a circle. So we have a circle here with uh, center being at the origin and the radius being equal to L2 plus D2. However, keep in mind that uh, since D2 is variable, then uh, it's going to be uh, the radius going to be variable and thus it's going to be uh, most likely a ring unless uh, the minimum value uh, is for D2 is going to be minus L2 to cancel out otherwise it's going to be a ring and um, with uh, the minimum radius can be calculated as l2 plus d2 minimum and the maximum radius will be l2 plus d2 maximum thus the workspace uh, we can define it now as the set of all possible points uh, that the interfector can reach in, in, in a plan robotic arm this will make up uh, an area for other um, non planar robotic arms um, this is going to be a volume usually uh, numerical tools are uh, utilized uh, in finding the the workspace here we have the Panasonic uh, VR008 robotic arm and we can see uh, a side view of the workspace and a top view of the workspace. Uh, in generating the workspace here, um, other factors are also taken into consideration, such as the hardware limits. Not all servo motors are capable of um, generating a 360 degrees rotation. Add to that that the um, programmer or the uh, robotic arm developer would uh, impose certain limitations also on the joint ranges uh, in order to avoid, uh, for example, collision uh, with objects in the environment or with uh, even uh, parts of the robotic arm itself.